Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian, and we are at the Museum of Flight at Boeing Field in Tuck Willow, Washington. And we're continuing our tour of this great museum uh, with Ted Hutter, who is the spokesman here. Um, you guys do have some uh, extraordinary artifacts in the collection. This floor of World War I stuff is just um, unbelievable, both reproductions, um, but as well as original aircraft. But this is really one of the most historic uh, aircraft uh, in the world from a military aircraft standpoint, isn't it? It's a remarkable airplane. It's, it's it's truly one of a kind. They made one of them and that was it. And it's regarded as the very first fighter aircraft. So like when you see an F-18, F-22 or anything like that, they can all be traced right back to this one back in 1914. And and what is the name of the aircraft? And give us a little bit about the history and how you guys came to, to, have, the, to, to, have, to have it in your collection. It's an Italian airplane, Caproni, Caproni 20. Um, it was the first airplane that was dedicated as a fighter. So you can see it's got a machine gun that points straight ahead over the prop. But, um, but that was an innovation at the time. You know, they finally got around that in another year or so. But um, unfortunately for the rest of us who were are fans of this type of airplane, Caproni was, uh, they made this fighter airplane and then we're given contracts for large twin engine bomber types. So that's what the, the company's mainly known for, you know, in that World War I. But um, the Caproni family obviously had an attachment to this plane as well. And they kept it on their private estate for the next 80 years. So it survived World War I, survived World War II, was found in a monastery, second floor of a monastery back in the 19. 80s and um, we were lucky enough to be able to make friends with the family and they wanted it to come here so we crated it up brought it here and we keep it in that condition that original condition and and it is extraordinary it's in all entirely original condition isn't it um, let me ask you something you know we were talking a little bit as we were walking around and you were saying how um, you know as, as somebody who's passionate about airplanes and you're you're a pilot you know you've devoted your life you worked at Edwards uh, you know the home of uh, you know high, high league flight testing uh, as well um, and you know friends who have reproduced these aircraft and are flying them with rotary engines and all the original technology right down to every every wire and the kind of cloth that's used. And there are a lot of misnomers about these airplanes, aren't there, in how they fly? I mean, the, the sort of perception of the World War I airplanes were all death traps. Right. They're, to, they're beginning to find out with uh, flying some of the original airplanes or ones that are as original as possible that um, a lot of what we know about them is just a little bit wrong. Um, flying a rotary engine, you know, well, if you want to turn against the engine, you can do that, but it's, it's just more of a rudder turn, and that was more common for pilots at that time. We now talk about coordinated rudder, stick and rudder skills, but back then it was just a different way of flying, and a lot of the planes were designed that way. So that's just one of the things that they're they're learning doing real flight tests uh, you know with test cards the whole bit it's very scientific um, this is all being done down in California at um, near Paso Robles sir thanks very much thank you